Nice meeting you all. I'm glad to be here. I'm Dr. Yahya Mohammed. I'm the project coordinator for the Country Learning Hub for Immunization Equity. Uh, I, we, are, we are leading this Gabi led initiative in order to influence learning and unlearning on the zero dose tuition in Nigeria. I'm glad to partner with the Geneva Learning Foundation to bring you an overview of what we intend to do. Uh, I wish to issue a strong disclaimer uh, that this project is in the inception stage and we welcome comment, criticism and how we can improve better uh, to deliver an effective uh, learning agenda for the country. Uh, even though we had a formal engagement with MPH, CDA, BIA, Gabi, uh, MPH, CDA is the uh, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, is a coordinating agency for immunization in Nigeria. But uh, I wish to mention the fact that we are yet to have a formal government launch. Uh, this launch will happen any moment, it's in the pipeline. So there might be some modification following government review of our proposal. This is the proposal we submitted to Gabi, and this is what we intend to implement for the country to improve on the zero dose situation. Now, a brief about the Nigeria Country Learning Hub is funded by Gabi, and it is meant to support the implementation of the IMA framework in Nigeria. The IMA framework is a conception that uh, focuses on identification, reach, uh, monitor, measure, and advocate uh, using evidence so that you can better reach uh, the zero dose children in Nigeria. The project is being implemented by my organization, AFINET. AFINET is African Field Epidemiology Network. We are, uh, we are a regional organization that uh, cover up to 42 countries in Africa, and we are supported in this application by AHBN. AHBN is the Africa Health Budget Network. They are a sub-recipient uh, in our own bidding. We enter the bid as a consortia. Now, we are working closely with the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and partners that are involved in immunization. And we believe government should take the lead. That is our policy as a partner organization. We believe government should take the lead while we support the implementation of most of these activities. There is the JSI-led consortia which is a combination of JSI, the Geneva Learning Foundation, and the India Institute of Health Management Research. They are supporting us at a global level in order to ensure that we, 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 we deliver on our mandate and we are also effective in our approach. Now, this project is divided into two pieces. We have the phase one and the phase two. The phase one will run from April to December of this year, while the PES 2 will run from January 2024 to December of 2025. Uh, as a background, I need to mention some definitions, even though I'm taking us back to what we all know. We, re we need to first of all mention who are the zero-dose children uh, based on Gabi operational definition. These are children that have not received any routine vaccine, and for operational purpose, Gabi defined them as those that lack the first dose of diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis containing vaccine. Of course, in Nigeria, we know we are referring to Pentawan and most other countries in this case. Now, under immunized children, refer to children that have not received a full course of routine and for operational power and they do not receive the titles of the terrier, tetanus and pertussis containing vaccine. Uh, missed communities are home to cluster of zero dose and under immunized children and they usually have multiple deprivation and vulnerabilities due to their socioeconomic disparity and lack of access to health services that are usually exacerbated by gender related barriers. Now, taking a look at the IMA framework as proposed by Gabi, the identified zero dose children, I focuses on identification. 
classification of the zero to zero dose children and the determination of why they had been missed. And we also look at issues that lead to that disruption. Is it due to insecurity? Is it due to gender disparity? Is it due to COVID-related issue? So depending on the factors and the region, that is what the identification aspect focus on. In the rich, we are looking at a coherent strategy to develop uh, ways that we can reach the zero dose children and miss community by addressing what hinders this ability to reach them, whether it is a supply side barrier or whether it is the uh, demand side barrier. And we are always trying to apply a gender lens to ensure equity. In the double M, the monitor and measure intervention, we are using multiple indicators and data source to assess progress and utilize innovative approach, especially the admin data, the looking at the community-based monitoring system, looking at surveys, implementation research, and other targeted assumptions to answer specific learning questions. While in the advocate strategy, we are looking at a strong political leadership through dedicated intervention that we can catalyze uh, progress equity so that we can effectively assess and strengthen primary care uh, using the critical stakeholders. Our overall project goal, we wanted to support the government of Nigeria to ensure that uh, immunization equity uh, is well entrenched in the system using the IMA learning agenda and for us to ultimately reduce the incidence of vaccine preventable diseases if our children are well uh, and effectively are fully immunized. Our first objective is we want to generate and synthesize learning on barriers to these children, why they are not very rich, and we want to look at tailored approach that can be used to help identify uh, rich children and this community. Our second objective is that we want to have a strong evidence base that will be used to identify the zero dose children by, by understanding among our different strategies, what works best, what should we scale up and what should we not scale up and what should we all learn in the processes we do in the organization. And we want to do this in a timely manner by providing evidence to government for actual impl implementation in real time. Our third objective focuses on improving the metrics and measures and methods that we use to assess and use data on a regular basis so that we can, uh, we can improve how we reach the zero dose children. Now, we are going to implement this whole objectives using a strategic approach. And if you remember earlier, I mentioned the project has two pieces, phase one and phase two. Phase one will run till the end of this year. And this is where we focus on conduction of uh, rapid assessment to strengthen evidence and also to plan as a planning stage. Most of the planning aspects that we want to develop a solid base be done in the phase one. Now, the strategic approach we are going to use uh, based on this, they are divided into these three pillars, and this is our strength to, to be able to improve this zero dose situation. First of all, we want to promote country learning using the IMAP framework. Secondly, we want to have uh, advocacy and partner engagement. And then lastly, we want to focus on capacity. So promotion of country learning using the IMA framework, we want to focus, we are focusing on two uh, main research. We have the mixed research method, which is a combination of the operational research and formative evaluation. And we also have the implementation science. In the uh, operational research and formative evaluation, we doing a secondary data analysis and primary data collection to 
bridge the gap of what was missed in the secondary data analysis. For the implementation science, we are going to look at the, uh, some of the methods that are already in place to reach the zero dose children. And we want to do a comparative study in terms of which one works better in terms of cost, in terms of access, and which should be utilized when and where, depending on the situation. Now, uh, for the secondary data analysis, we are focusing on identification of gaps that exist in our reporting system. And for this, from the month of July to December, we are going to be looking at monthly analysis of the DHIS2 data and all the SMS data reporting system and looking at pattern and trends on the situation in country. We are going to do data triangulation at the national and also facility level, looking at different data sources, the birth register, immunization register, and other sources to pass track on the immunized children. At the national level, we are also going to look at the different surveys that have been done, the NDHS survey, the mixed NIC survey, uh, trying to look at uh, whether we can have an overlay of what, what is happening. We're also going to do a catchment area mapping at the health facility level. We want to uh, help to frequently update migrant population and we want to have a detailed and comprehensive catchment area list of all the facilities that are within our implementation goal, our areas of implementation. And we want to focus on comparison with neighboring health facility to ensure that we do not omit any of these facilities. It is important, uh, I mentioned the fact that we will be focusing on four states in the country. And we did this based on a prioritization that was carried out by NERIC. NERIC is the National Emergency Routine Immunization Coordination Center, which is a unit under an emergency committee under the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. The earlier on prioritized state based on the burden of zero dose children, and we selected four, two in the Northwest and then two in the South, uh, in the Northeast. And we did a segregation based on their own fragility the ability to have the internally displaced persons and whether some of them are rural or urban. So we are going to focus on this fourth state for our own research. We are also going to have a responsive feedback mechanism using community informants so that we continuously generate evidence on what is lacking and then fill in the gap and make progress. Now, where we are not able to provide answer based on our secondary data analysis, we intend to have primary data collection and we have a robust way to address issues that has to do with the drivers of demand, supply, equity and gender related challenges using different methods, qualitative and some form of quantitative methods. Uh, we'll be working in four states, as I mentioned, and in each of these four states, will be looking in, working in two local government areas, which I had mentioned earlier. Now, in each of these local government area, we are going to use leverage on the LQAS, Papa LQAS, out of the selected health facility, we'll select four that have already based on the most recent El Papa LQAS that has been done, we'll select four health facilities where we'll be conducting our survey. And in that facility, we start at the LGA level. We'll conduct key employment interview targeting the primary health center coordinator or the uh, local government uh, officer in charge of immunization, the LIO. And we'll also have another session with a key employment interview with the culture officer to look at uh, culture related issues. Then we'll go to these four facilities, and in each of these facilities, we'll do a health facility-based assessment where we have an assessment tool that has been adopted from the uh, World Health Organization Service Readiness Assessment, 
and we look at key components as the affect routine immunization, looking at the manpower, uh, the, that's the human resources, looking at the equipment, looking at the data tools, and even the infection control measures. We'll go ahead to interview either the routine immunization focal person or the officer in charge of provision of immunization using a key informant interview, looking at what uh, the demand side barriers, supply chain barriers, and others. Then we'll select one community that is a catchment area of that facility and we use it to conduct a key informant interview for the community or traditional leaders or religious leaders in that uh, community to understand the issues of why we are having the zero dose children and why not. We'll also select households where we conduct in-depth interview with a mother from each of the settlement to understand the various uh, issues affecting demand that has to do with uh, uh, immunization. We will have two focus group discussion, two groups of focus discussion consisting of 10 people each. Uh, for the first group, we'll have fathers and head of households, male head of households. And then we we'll have a second group where we'll have the mothers uh, together with the, with the grandmothers, if they are the head of households or they are influencers in that situation to get a deep dive of the issues affecting uh, immunization. The implementation science, uh, we are going to collaborate with NERIC and partners so that we, we have a robust plan to look at how we are going to look at different programs that have been developed to address the zero dose situation. One of them is the routine immunization intensification and also the optimized integration of routine immunization services, the ORI strategy. The ORI strategy was launched in 2018 across the itinerary priority state uh, so as to decrease, to increase fixed and outreach session. Now, we want to generate evidence to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of this current national strategy in reaching the zero dose children in the different levels, whether it is in the remote rural areas, hard to reach, the urban slum, in these states that we are focusing on. We also want to evaluate the scalability and sustainability of these strategies. And some of the research questions that we'll be interested in, we are going to look at is, is always an efficient and effective approach to reach the zero dose children to address the supply side, demand side, and gender related issues that uh, will hinder our ability or fasten our, hasten our ability to reach the zero dose children and bring them close to the health system. Uh, we're also going to look at the issue of cost effectiveness of the two strategies so that we can better inform and advise the government on what to do. The next, our next pillar of engagement is on advocacy and partner engagement. For the advocacy, we are focusing on stakeholder and partner mapping, targeting uh, partners and stakeholders in the national, state, LGA, and community level. We'll also do a DEX review and a socioeconomic analysis, looking at different operational documents uh, available at the national and state level. And also, the, we look at the zero dose related government commitment and public pronouncement of policymakers. We'll uh, do additional advocacy when we are conducting the rapid assessment for the zero dose situation. And we are going to have programs to multiple, we are going to have a program for monthly engagement of EPI program managers uh, as a sort of advocacy during the implementation of our program. We will also support uh, sustainability issue through the implementation of research on the IMA, and we'll always collaborate with community structure 
to ensure that there is continuous engagement of the uh, village development committee and the world development committee and we keep on updating and uh, our information that is already with us we will obtain and keep on updating information as a final strategy that we adopt in this project is on the issue of capacity building we intend to do some sort of health system strengthening focusing on data uh, and data officers but to do that we intend to do a SWOT analysis of the current training programs to understand what works best and what are the gaps in this training secondly we will conduct a need assessment focusing on our target recipient or the training and then we are going to have a two days training workshop that we will use to develop the tailored training materials based on our sort analysis and training needs and we will have a community establish a community of practice uh, using a Google Plus platform. Then we are going to also conduct a national NME training focusing on key national stakeholders that are involved in handling data for immunization. And then we are going to implement a fellowship training in monitoring, evaluation, and learning, focusing on state and LGE officers and data managers. We are going to do a fellowship targeting uh, for a fellowship of 10 weeks. Uh, we are going to have two cohorts per, per year. Um, we intend to train 40 data officers and m and &E staff at the, including the SIO at state and LGE level. Uh, we are going to have a didactic and then a field-based session. In the didactic session, we intend to have a workshop that will last for five days uh, in the first uh, cluster, then we'll have project implementation and workshop that will last for four weeks. We follow them up in the field and provide real-time support. Then we have a second workshop that we light for three days. Then we are going to have project implementation for the next four weeks. And we'll have a final workshop to round up there will be a certificate issued at the end of training, a uh, certificate of competency. Uh, still, we are going to strengthen peer-to-peer -peer learning sessions of the community and health facility officers. And then uh, uh, we are going to, do, do, to have an, an RI academy, a routine immunization academy. But this time around, we are going to have some modules that will develop and then mount through WhatsApp platforms to facilitate learning at the state and LGA levels. Uh, this is our theory of change. And in all of these projects that I have been discussing, we have one assumption that government will be ready and will support us and they will prioritize the IMA strategy. And our second assumption is that uh, the quality of existing routine data is high and that population estimate are up to date and also the government is open to data sharing with implementing partners. But we anticipate some risk and part of this risk is that there might be competing priority agenda like COVID-19 and we're also not unaware of the fact that Nigeria is witnessing another transition, which is also associated with a lot of change and renewed hope and political issues are happening in country. And we're also not mindful of the fact that insecurity might worsen, even though that's not our prayer, but it might worsen in some areas. And we also have the issue of a risk, the issue of data sharing, it might be a risk for us. But then we are going to leverage on our heavy, the national policies and strategies that exist in country, and also the presence of highly trained and skilled health workers, and also the availability of security personnel that have been trained on how to administer to support 
healthcare workers in administration of vaccine and security compromise uh, areas. And we're also leveraging on the fact that Affinet as an organization has heavy presence in government structures, specifically the NERIC, uh, and also the other technical working group, which we can use to discuss with government and show the visibility and the importance of the project we are doing. We're also leveraging on our existing MOU with several organizations in the academia, in the government cycle, and also the existing Gavi investment. Our overall project impact at the end of the year is we hope, at the end of the project cycle, is we hope to have improved immunization equity in country. And we intend that this will lead to this outbreak of preventable diseases in over rural and conflict zones in the country. Uh, so far, we started in the last week of April and we have made some progress. We have completed our service agreement. We had our onboarding meeting and we have completed most of our procurement and recruitment processes. And we, 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 we are participating in the full portfolio planning of Gabi. We have presence in the subcommittee and we are having our internal meeting as a consortia and also between us and our global learning partner. There, on, uh, there are some ongoing actions, which uh, the exception report, which, is, which will be submitted uh, soon. And we have a protocol on closing the immunization gap, which is ready for submission by, 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 by Monday also. And our draft mail plan and learning agenda are ongoing together with our partner engagement strategies. Now, uh, with these few briefs, I have come to the end of my presentation and I will be ready to take comments, uh, questions, and advice from members of this uh, teacher's session so that we can better reach the zero dose children. Uh, thank you all. And that's all from me for now. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yahaya Mohammed. Uh, there is a question in the Q&A from Hawa Buhari. Uh, let me just read it out to you. And while I'm encouraging the others, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead use the chat or the Q&A so that Dr. Yahaya can respond. So the question from uh, Hawa Buhari said, Dr. Yahaya, I see based on the prioritized LGAs for Sokosto State, only two were selected and based on our data, GADA has the highest number of unimmunized among the zero dose identified LGA, but it was not selected was into your prioritized LGA. So surely she wants to, she wants to find out about the priorities uh, uh, the criteria that were used to prioritize maybe the LGAs in Sokoto State. Yeah. Thank you, um, Hawa Buhari, for that uh, question. Uh, Gada, I don't know which, uh, based on which data you are mentioning, uh, Gada with the highest number of uh, zero dose. It might be based on a recent or an old data. I wish you had mentioned the data source. The data source we use was a NERIC prioritization that was done uh, in 2022, if I remember correctly. And it was based on that. And we, we look at the high dose, high, high number of zero dose children in addition to other considerations of security, fragility, presence of IDP. And we had to do a prioritization depending on urban or rural settlement. But this is not something that is fixed. This is something that uh, if we have superior evidence before our implementation, we are always ready to change. Uh, we are here for you and we want to reach all the zero dose children. And uh, if you can provide us with further information, it will help. But uh, this is what we use. So that's my response. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yahaya. I was trying to see if I could invite uh, Hawa Buhari into the panel so that she can uh, better explain yes, exactly. uh, how she, uh, but I see she hasn't requested. Maybe it's uh, an issue that I'm having with my connectivity, but I also saw a comment in the chat from, uh, 
from Jane Raburu. That says, uh, Dr. Yahaya, how did uh, you involve religious groups? How can will you involve religious groups as some of them tend to be an impediment to immunization? Okay. Um, we, I earlier on mentioned that uh, the CSO we are working with, uh, Africa Health Budget Network, the, the advocacy is one of the strong pillar and their headquarter is in Sokoto. Uh, it's led by Dr. Amina Gemagashi. Most of us know him. He has been somebody that has worked in the health system space and also somebody that has done several advocacy. We intend to leverage on their own experience and networking to uh, bring up religious group and understand. We want to understand their reasons and see how we can work better. Most of the issues proposed might not even be religious, but might be cultural or uh, based on conservatism. But there is no religion that I'm aware of that prevents immunization. So it might be a misinterpretation of the religion. So these are issues that when you bring them up, you discuss, you might be able to find out the reason and so that we can be able to better address these reasons. So we are going to bring them up and we are going to have discussion sessions with them. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again. Yeah, thank you once again, Dr. Yahaya. Abdullahi Umar asks, is there any plan to extend to the other 11 uh, zero-dose LGAs in Sokoto? Well, uh, this is a study for now. Uh, our own focus is to understand the drivers and we feel the tool will give us a better picture of uh, what we want to do based on what we did. So if you are studying uh, any operational research or formative evaluation, you don't have, you don't need to have the total population source. We believe that if we have, uh, if we have these two sample LGAs, and we conduct an, the study effectively, we'll be able to have answers that we are looking for. So for now, it's not a program we are implementing. Rather, it's a study we are implementing to understand what is happening to the programs and then why are we having the zero dose children. I think it's important for me to make this distinction so that people will understand we are not going as a program or as a project to immunize children. But rather, we are trying to understand the reasons of why are we not immunizing the children. And then the different interventions we are doing, why are they working? Which one works best? Which one doesn't work best? Where should we focus our attention and strategy? I think it is important for me to make this distinction uh, so that people will understand that it is not a project that will involve the whole LGA or the whole state. Uh, it's just, we're just sampling, sampling, and we believe this tool will give us what we want. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yaya. I see uh, your last uh, comments have responded maybe to the question uh, from Git Aniyom in the chat concerning scaling up uh, of the project. You have clarified it is uh, you're trying to find out. And uh, Imam, I've been uh, inviting some of you who have indicated maybe they wanted to speak, inviting you to join the panel. Uh, uh, Imam uh, Bello Wada, he said, great proposal, Dr. Yahya, and looking for collaboration with you uh, for Kano State, the state with the highest number of zero dose local government areas and children. So I was inviting uh, Imam uh, 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 Bello Wada, if you are able to, 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 to join um, the panel so that you can unmute yourself and speak. I've also done the same with a, a number of you, probably connectivity issues may be stopping you. Um, and I see, uh, Dr. Yahya, are you still there? Uh, yes, Reda, there is a question from uh, Edego Ibrahim Ismaila. Good presentation, Yahya. My question is, what are the strategies you intend to employ in Irma to reach zero those children already in security compromised areas? Because as far as I'm concerned, they are at risk. Security compromised areas. As far as I'm concerned, they are at risk of being missed. Not really as 
other zero dose children in other locations may be due to communication, administrative or locational issues that is hard to reach mobile population, etc. Yeah, as I mentioned before, um, we will be we 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 will be studying and then also asking of which methods are the best so that we can further advise government. We will not be the implementers per se of immunization program in the security compromised areas. But we know that there are different strategies over the years that have been developed in the Northeast uh, to reach children in the compromised settings. If we all recall the occurrence of the uh, how the polio education help to help in the uh, eradication of polio from the country. So our own project is focusing on providing answers and also providing solutions and then uh, discussing on what should be uh, step down, what should we all learn so that we are able to effectively reach the zero dose children. I hope I'm providing better perspective so that people will understand what we intend to do. We are more of policy uh, advisors to government by interacting with different stakeholders. Okay, and there's, there's Rebecca Bello that uh, is requesting, is it possible to have the presentation? Okay, I will discuss with my organization and I will provide feedback back to Charlotte and Zedi. I will get back to the, within the next, uh, by plus of work on Monday, uh, because these are uh, documents that are with my organization. Once they have, they are already, some of them are already public. Once there is no reservation, I will share. Okay. And I see mm. uh, Magachi Garba Adamu, you are on the panel, your video is on, so I assume you're having good connectivity. Are you able to unmute yourself? Do you have any comments uh, with regards to uh, 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 this uh, 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 work that is being rolled out uh, 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 under the banner of the Gavi Zero Dose Learning Hub and the Country Learning Hub in Nigeria? Any comments, any questions? And Magaji, please go ahead and unmute yourself. And initiated by by the Gabi. Uh, my only additional is uh, well, we have introduced another strategy at reaching zero dose in Kano State about uh, five years ago while I'm working with the UNICEF. The strategy is what we call MOT, Miss Opportunity, Miss Opportunity Track. Uh, Miss Opportunity Track, yes, MOT. We can uh, what we did now is yes. uh, okay. Um, apart from the community mobilizers, we are working with. We introduce what you call in the in the in the general hospitals, in the OPDs. So when a child is being brought to the hospital, first of all, we track his immunization status before we start. Uh, we start treating him. If if he's for the first time, did officially immunization straight? We take him to the immunization center. He's being immunized. Then we brought him back. And we start treating him with, with the illness that he's brought to the hospital. By doing this, we achieve a lot. We achieve many zero doses. While the the the, the VCM, uh volunteer community mobilizers, they are busy mobilizing house. Uh, so by this, we try what we, we, we did. We reduce a lot of zero deaths that time in Kano, and the our coverage introduces. Thank you. Thank you very much, Magaji Gaba Adamu. Please, before you go, can you introduce yourself? Hello. Can you introduce yourself and tell us? Maybe my name is Ma my name is Magaji Gaba Adamu. I am now a retired community health officer. I work with uh, UNICEF, with the, you said, with the WHO on the immunization section. I was retired about three years, two years ago. 
Hello. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. We had you. Well done. Mother. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Magazi. Yeah. Thank we'll you. We'll sure to look at that strategy you mentioned. And especially okay. when looking at Tano. Yes. And, and it's now. It's, Uh, Magaji, please, are you able to unmute yourself again? If you yes, yes, to... yes. Yes. Please go ahead. What I'm saying now is, is the, the state government has now introduced, uh, 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 has made it a mandate in the in the in the in the system. So it's a, it's become part of the system. Okay. Uh, thank you very so, much, uh, Magaji. Yeah, and uh, we have a colleague uh, from a pair from uh, India. We have a pair from India that has left some comments in the chat talking about what is done in India to reach a uh, uh, zero dose. That is, uh, uh, he says, uh, in India, zero dose it handles starting in the health facility. The newborn is given vaccines before the mother is discharged this should be mandated so that future of missing zero dose infants will be lesser okay um, it's a good and strategy charlotte hello charlotte it's a good yes. strategy the indian strategy but then if you look at our own population why a large proportion deliver at home you need to follow them up to convince them to come uh, to the facility to receive immunization uh, uh, especially for a project we implemented in Adawa on targeting newborns immediately after delivery uh, for hepatitis B bad dose. You see a lot of misconception. Some feel they shouldn't come for immunization after delivery. It's not safe for the mother to come out. So we just had to, to discuss with them and convince them that the mother might not be the one. You can delegate someone, her elder sister, a grandmother, to bring the child to the facility. It must not be the mother, even though it is also important for her to assess antenatal care if she presents in the facility. Thank you, and over. OK, uh, thank you. There is a question that came to me uh, through Telegram. I think Fanny uh, Ogu was not able to, to use the chat. She says, uh, uh, are the lined up proposed trainings limited to the four chosen states or could they be expanded to other states? Okay, the proposed trainings. The proposed trainings are happening in our second year and they are still, uh, it's an idea that we have uh we haven't uh rolled out the concept fully but for now we are focusing in the only on those four states where we'll be collecting our prim primary data but depending on our finding and depending on what uh is seen as the impact of these trainings i'm sure i will get funders to support more in these trainings we are affinate our strong uh pillar is training. And if we are able to demonstrate that this training had impact in improving data quality to reach zero dose children, I'm sure we get funding uh, from Gabi, from others to improve on this training to have a nation, nationwide coverage. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yahaya. Uh, more uh, comments uh, in the chat. Okay, and there is a follow-up comment uh, from uh, Hawa Buhari uh, talking about uh, linking up with uh, with partners uh, to know more about zero dose uh, targeted interventions in selected local government area because uh, she says yeah. UNICEF currently has an intervention called the Integrated R Routine Immunization Initiative, which uh, Wamako is also a part of uh, the implementing. Uh, local government areas and i think that is still in sokoto state i really wish yeah. we would have been able to listen to hawa buhari uh today okay um so and uh, there was another comment in the chat i wanted to highlight from uh, ibrahim isiaka 
that says uh, talking about speaking louder on misinformation and rumors concerning promoting health uh, through uh, uh, through immunization because uh, uh, children are not safe without being fully immunized from vaccine preventable diseases. So it is important to create other ways to stop rumors and false information spread by those who don't have uh, ideas and knowledge of immunization. So uh, those are some of the comments that are coming in, showing a lot of interest uh, on this topic. So I am sure Nigerians have uh, lots of experiences around zero dose. So there is Abdullahi Umar, a question that just came in. Is there a plan to involve CGLF alumni during the research? I will allow Reda to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> You see with us? Uh, Reda, are you still in the room? Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm here. And so first of all, thank you, uh, Yahaya Mohammed. Very pleased uh, to, that you were able to uh, present the Country Learning Hub and very pleased to see uh, the quality of the questions and comments and, and reflections from, uh, from scholars, both those from Nigeria, but also from India and other countries. Now on collaboration, of course, um, uh, the, uh, the alumni uh, are you're particularly capable talented um, you have, uh, for those who've survived the, the Geneva Learning Foundations programs. Uh, and I hope they can, in fact, if they choose to, uh, and if there are opportunities to be an asset uh, to, the, uh, to Afina, to the Country Learning Herb, to the research that you're doing, they're certainly a very talented uh, and, and unique group working countrywide in pretty much every state in Nigeria. Uh, so you know, I would say let's explore together uh, with uh, the alumni if and how uh, there can be collaboration. Okay. Thank you, Reda. And I will pass on the message to my tough executives. It's, a good to, it's always good to collaborate, and I believe in joint delivery. And this is a project we are implementing with the Geneva Learning Foundation anyway. Uh, Jenny has been uh, with us in Nigeria for quite a long time. So. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yaya. That's good to hear. Um, we have just uh, less than three minutes uh, to the end, and I see Jenny has come on. Uh, Jenny, any yeah. uh, thoughts and comments from you uh, uh, before we turn over to Dr. Yahaya for a uh, final words? Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Um, I just wanted yes. to say that that um, this initiative with Gavi and Afinet in Nigeria, I think, is really critical because we need to have better evidence of what works and what doesn't work in addressing zero dose, which is the same issue as unimmunized and left okay. out from, from long ago. So trying to understand, you know, is OIRIS effective? Is uh, missed opportunities in immunization effective? Looking at effectiveness studies is really, really important because that will then help to inform scale up. So I just wanted to thank uh, Gavi and Afinet for this initiative. Uh, thank you so much, Jenny. And uh, I have invited Prof. Becky Takbo uh, to join the panel. And though I promise we're going to hear from Jenny last, but uh, 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 Becky, uh, you have joined the panel. Are you able to unmute yourself? Is there a question or comment you want to share? And please do start by introducing yourself. Okay, hello everyone. Reda, Charlotte, Dr. Yahaya. Hi everyone. I, I'm sorry I joined late. I was uh, networking. <laughs> so yeah. my name is Becky Tabo. Um, I'm based in Enugu. I'm a professor of um, pediatrics and uh, vaccinology at the University of Nigeria. Uh, I'm also the chair of the WHO African Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety. So I'm so happy to be um to have met the last part of this session. I'm sorry I missed uh, the presentation. I, I believe there should be a recording, so I hope to go and listen to it. And i um, happy to uh, be in the Nigerian team, the winning team. So Thank I you. think that um, we were going to change the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Prof, for your nice comments. <laughs> Glad to meet you here. Thank you.
Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. And uh, uh, once again, just to say this is maybe just a, a, a first a warm up kind of session because we are planning the inter country uh, peer learning experience sharing on zero dose between Nigeria and Uganda in the last week of July. So I am sure we'll get to hear more about the strategies, the activities that you are carrying out in your localities uh, to identify and reach zero dose children. And we we know we already started collecting stories uh, from uh, uh, Nigerian uh, uh, immunization, uh, zero dose workers will continue to get more. So I'm going to turn over to Dr. Yahaya. I know you've spoken much since the start of this session, but uh, you will have uh, the closing words uh, for today. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish to most sincerely appreciate uh, Reda, Jenny, and you, Charlotte, and the teaming members that have joined us across the world, and specifically from Nigeria, including my good friend, Dr. Imam Hawada, has been giving us a lot of questions, and from Becky for the support, and also for us to, to be able to bring to you what we intend to do. And we are also looking for also input from you, whether online, offline, on how we can better improve this. Because in the end, if we succeed in this work, uh, we succeed in protecting the next generation of Nigerians that are your children, that are my children, and they are going to be your grandchildren. For God's grace, together we will deliver. Thank you all. Thank you, Charlotte. Yeah, thank you. Once again, thank you, everyone. And uh, you are invited to go back to networking. <laughs> uh, let me just uh, put the link in the chat. If you want to go continuing, uh, continue discussing uh, with um, uh, with peers and getting to learn their experiences, I'm just inviting you to click on the link in the chat to return to networking. And I wish you uh, all happy networking. Uh, Reda, I am sure networking is open up till uh, 6 p.m. Geneva time or even up to 8 p.m. for those who want to continue to interact with uh, peers and colleagues from across the globe. So, Charlotte, I would say check the schedule. Um, but yes, it's open to, you know, so you can keep networking as long as there are uh, people who participants in teach to reach who stay in the networking area. You should be able to meet more and more, have more and more individual meetings. Of course, we've suggested questions and themes and topics for discussion. But you are free to discuss any professional topic in relation to immunization and primary health care that is helpful to you in your work. On Monday, you will receive the request for the post-event feedback. This is how you earn a letter of certification by sharing what you learned, what insights you gained, uh, what lessons learned, what successes, what challenges you learned from by uh, sharing with your colleagues. Uh, so uh, you, I hope that the, you find the networking uh, useful and productive. And we know that it has been the case for many of you. This is why you keep coming back. This is why teach to reach is growing. And I hope that working with uh, the uh, Zero Dose Learning Hub with Gavi, with the Country Lab, uh, Learning Hub partners like Yahaya Mohammed, I hope, Yahaya, you'll take part in the networking before you leave uh, teach to reach uh, today. And I hope that you'll have some uh, remarkable meetings and insights uh, from the uh, from this uh, from from the uh, exchanges that you can have one to one with uh, scholars at Teach to Reach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Rada. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.